Hi, and welcome to Art Today. I am Rachel Neese, and today joining us is one of my wonderful students, Maddie. And we are doing something Maddie has never done today, which is pretty exciting. It's called paper quilling. So it looks super, it looks a little, I don't know, do you think it looks a little crazy? It looks crazy, a, crazy, a little complicated. Okay. But it really isn't. So, um, paper quilling was actually started in, I believe, in China. They are the ones that invented paper, as far as I know. So, it is a very ancient art form, but it can be taken into a modern setting. So, you don't need a whole lot to get started in paper quilling. I went gun ho in grad school, and I ended up making the rooster, if you want to kind of hold them up, Maddie. Um, this is not anything you need to do. This was for a grad level class. Um, so I went all out and probably spent about $60 on Amazon getting all the supplies. So the supplies are not expensive when you get a kit. Um, but you can start off pretty small and just spend about $15, $20. If it's something that you really like, you can get into some more, but you don't have to go all out like I did. So the basic things you are going to need are these things. So, and you can get a battery operated one as well. And do you see how they all have like a little piece for like a slide of paper? Yeah. So they're called quilling pins, I believe is the technical term. You'll need scissors. You'll need strips of colored paper. You can buy quilling paper. And then you need some kind of glue. A lot of people use Elmer's glue. I personally, because it dries faster, I like the tacky glue. Um, and you even have the fast grab tacky glue so you can get it even faster. So it just depends on what kind of glue you want. If you get a set of um, quilling supplies, it's going to come with all kinds of stuff. Um, we've got a crimper here, which is cool. You have this guy, which helps you make like domes, and I'll show you how to use that. You've got the comb, which isn't my favorite, but you can like weave things in and out of it. Um, I don't know what this guy's called, but it comes with little pegs, and there's just so many things you can do once you grasp the basic thing for it. So, a lot of quilling like kits will come with these extra pieces to help you practice. So Maddie went ahead and picked out hers and I picked out mine. But if your kit doesn't come with this, you can simply print something offline. Like that's what I did for this little babushka doll or nesting doll. I just printed off an image and filled it in with the quilling. So it does not have to be complicated. You can draw, you can go freehand. Um, but Maddie, if you wanna go ahead and start picking out like say like three colors for one flower and I will show you how to do the the basic quill and then we can start setting it up and I promise it looks so much more intimidating than it actually is so let's see I'm gonna and you do want to pay attention some of them might be thicker than others they have different heights so yours are about like a quarter of an inch where if you see like mine's a little thinner yeah um, so it just depends. It'll give you some like different levels in your art, which I think is cool. Mm -hmm. So Do they'll, you tear these off? yep, you just tear it off. It's got a little thing on the bottom. You just pull off however many you need. And go with that. And I'll do, yeah, I'll do a yellow too. So you just pull them off. Obviously I've gotten into these and they're a whole mess, but it's really fun. So let's see. I'm gonna grab these little guys in here. So, do you wanna start with a thin one or a thick one? I think all of mine are pretty thin. Okay. I think so we brought the same. That'll be like your most basic one there. Okay. I'm gonna go with the skinny one to begin with so that I'm not like hurting <laughs> going with the battery operated one so it's real hard to see on camera but this little guy here has a slit in it so you want to slide the end of your paper into it is that one piece of paper just one piece of paper 
And you want to try to, once you have it kind of in there, bring it all the way to the edge. And then you're going to start twisting this thing. And it's, you got to hold the paper taut. So like if you're using your thumb and your forefinger, and then you're just twisting this guy. And you might want to go slow to begin with, but you can go real quick if you wanted to. So the whole point is to get as tight of a coil as you possibly can. There you go. And it's okay if it goes down a little bit because we can like play with that. So Once you get to the end, you're going to try to, and it might unravel a little bit on you, you're going to try to pull that guy out and you're going to be left with like a curly cue. So while Maddie's doing that, I'm going to flatten mine out a little bit. All right. So I really, I just let it go, but then I'm flattening it out a little bit. So this is kind of the time where you could decide how big you need your coil. So that's why these bubbles on the pre-made images are so cool. Cause you can kind of like pull them a little tighter if you need them tighter and kind of decide exactly how big you want them. And then, and they do sell these like tiny little bottles with like a um, little needle that you can add the glue to, but I honestly feel like those are so, they clog up so easily that I just use an old, I don't know, that thing even has glitter in it. Woo, we have glitter in the ceramics room now. Okay. Well, it would help with that one where the open one. So you just want to squeeze a little bit of glue into whatever you're using. So I'm using the blue or the red thing. I think this came with the kit. So if you want to give yourself some glue. Um, and most kits will come with like a little glue dabber. So that's why that one doesn't. I think it's a glue dabber. It could be. <laughs> you could use it for quilling as well. But I'm just going to get a little glue. Put it right on the end of my piece of paper and then try to line it up and because this stuff is quick i then have a coil that's not going anywhere how'd yours work out um i think it's a little not very loose but i think it turned out pretty good yeah. for my first time and you can do them looser or tighter just depending on what look you're going for and even this guy, if you're wanting them to be real tight, you can, and I'll show you on our next coil, where we can coil it real tight, put it in here, let it unravel, and then it'll give us the exact shape. Okay. So this thing's real cool. I don't know what it's called, but I love it. So once you kind of have that together and you know exactly where you want to put it, that is where, like having the glue in here, you. I'm getting glitter everywhere. You just want to kind of like take your piece in there and just, there's other ways there's, you can look at people online that do all of this stuff and they're very particular. You know, we talk about craftsmanship all the time in art class where they would probably do this a lot prettier than I would, but they get glue everywhere. And then you just line it up, glue it down. I think the big thing is they try not to have glue showing so i'm not sure if it'll show up on camera but on that little yellow where i had glue coming out a professional like person would that would probably really bother them so they would probably come in with like a paintbrush or something and just like smooth out that glue but we are practicing for now so maddie we are gonna roll up some more and we're gonna take a break and we will be right back with some more quilling As Alabama's first and largest school system, the Mobile County Public Schools prides itself on the high quality of education we provide our students. We have been successful over the years in raising our graduation rates. And have been recognized nationally for closing achievement gaps. We believe that our primary focus is to educate all students to become productive citizens. This is our commitment to them and to you.
My name is Harshini. I'm a junior at Davidson High School, and after graduation, I plan on pursuing a career in dermatology. Currently, I'm taking science classes such as AP Chemistry, Biology, and Human Anatomy, which will help me pursue my career. I feel as though Mobile County is preparing me for my career choice in that they provide rigorous classes that help me think further beyond just what I'm learning. I'm Harshini Cannon, a junior at Davidson High School, and I'm learning today so I can be a leader tomorrow. Hi, and welcome back to Art Today. And do not forget to check out our other episodes on YouTube slash MCPSS TV Network for all our Art Today episodes. And just to refresh, I do have my wonderful helper here, one of my students, Maddie, and we are working on paper quilling. So we went ahead and made a few extra ones. And what did you just figure out how to do, Maddie? I figured out how to make like a teardrop shape. Um, so I put the and paper. She's, she's using the um, battery operated one now because it's a lot easier. <laughs> Still trying to figure out how it kind of works, but it's a lot easier. Yeah, it takes a little finagling to figure it out. But once you figure it out, do you think this one would be for like real little kids? I'm thinking probably like 10 and up. Yeah, I'd say it's around for like, around like 10, I'd say. Yeah, you just want to have a little bit more dexterity. So there might be some younger kids that might be able to get into it, but I think like 10 and up, it would be a good one. So to clarify, just mm -hmm. make it a little, I let it get a little bit loose. Yep. And... So she's taking the, it went real tight with the battery operated quilling. So she had a real tight coil and she's loosening it up a little bit. I'm going to glue it just a little bit. And she's going to go ahead and secure the end. And make sure it gets stuck on there fairly well. Sometimes they'll come undone on you and you just got to redo them. Like, I think I need to add one more to my little fox guy. Like you can see, like it missed. Mm -hmm. I just need to figure out what color that is and remake it at some point. And but. then I just pinch it into the teardrop shape. Yep. So you can pinch things like this one. We pinched it into a teardrop shape. I'm going to grab this one real quick. So this one, you can also, if you do, you can pinch it on both ends. And then you get almost like a leaf shape. Mm -hmm. So there's all kinds of different pinching and pulling um we can use this mat you can use this guy's real interesting i don't know if you want to use him for anything um still not my favorite tool but you can kind of like go every other it's almost like weaving and then you can come back and weave further so it's like how you can get real big coils so it's like every other one you can get something kind of like that and then when you pull it off you've got like an oval shape so that's one way to do the leaves if you want to i'm just not a huge fan of this guy um the other real cool thing that i wanted maddie to try is the texture roller guy maddie you know i love texture texture yes. is like one of my favorite mm -hmm. things in class but you stick the paper in and you twist and it crinkles, and it, it crinkles it. So I really love this because then you can get some more texture. So you've got the smooth, you've got the crinkle. You can take like this little crinkle guy I did earlier and add it in. And I just think it gives it more visual, visual funness, I guess would be. <laughs> There's gotta be a better term, like actual word for it, but visual funness, that works too. Makes it look cooler. I like it cooler, yep. So you can use that on any, you don't have to use that one. I just thought you'd enjoy. Mm -hmm. It feels real nice. It. Yeah, it like softens up the paper and you can do things. It's how I did the face on um, also the tail on the rooster. I don't think I did any on the foxes, but I find it fun. But it really is just kind of practicing. So just like any other kind of art form, because have you ever had an art form that's come easy to you like right no. away? Mm -mm. You've had to practice at everything, right? I've had to practice everything. Yep. I'm still practicing. Yep. I am too. Like, it is something I try to tell my students, like, just because I look like I know what I'm doing, it is just because I have been practicing longer. I am not a master at it. Um, if I were a master at it, I'd probably be making more. And 
I'd be a lot more lonely. I like my students. They keep me company. And they give me purpose. So I don't think I would want to master anything because then I couldn't work with you guys. You'd be selling my artwork. So there are really all kinds of things. So you're going to kind of keep playing with that one, Maddie? Yep. All right. I'm going to show just real quick. We've got a little extra time. I'm going to show a couple of these cool pieces and just kind of explain how I do it. I don't think this is officially the way to do it. I know there are some people that get real into paper quilling and they take it very serious. Um, so I'm sure I'm not doing it the best way, but sometimes you just got to make what works for you work. So I'm going to keep rolling. I've got a couple extra ones here. So this little thing I really love because I can make 3D type things. So I just kind of let my coil go on there and I'm going to glue it. You're going to get a little sticky with this. Um, like I said, they've got ways to do this to where it's clean. I just go ahead and stick my finger in the glue. It's a whole thing. And then... I don't think this is the proper way to do it, but this is what has worked for me time and time again, where I just smear a bunch of glue, the fast acting stuff. And then because this is plastic, when it is dry, I can pull it up and then, so I'm technically gluing it to the plastic and then I'm gonna pull it up. It's gonna hold its shape. So it'll be more 3D-esque. So it's like a little cone. Yep. So you can do like more flat bottom co cones and more like oval cones. Mm -hmm. And then this guy you can do tiers with. So I think most of the time people, will, so like if I want a square, so you see like circle, yeah. triangle, square. So say I want a square that's this big. And instead of using like the battery operated thing, you just kind of wrap it around and it's gonna give you a square. You can also make like with the foxes you can make borders. So you make one border and then you start filling it in with, with quilling. So like I got a little triangle or square, square. I got a little square of paper so I can glue that together and then I can put like small things and fill that in. So there's just so many things that we can do. So Maddie, you want to go ahead and add some more and we'll come back and try to explain what we played around with so go ahead go get something to drink come back join us maybe um look at amazon and see how much one of these are because i promise you it is fun and we will be right back I'm Ashley Rich, District Attorney. Today I want to talk to you about a program that we at the District Attorney's Office has with the Mobile County Public School Systems to help with the bullying issues that are going on in today's world because of social media and because our young people think it's okay to bully others. It's not okay to bully others. Bullying is repeated verbal and physical abuse, ongoing verbal and physical abuse. We at the Mobile County District Attorney's Office want to help the community, we want to help the public school system, and we want to stop bullying within our community. It's really, really important that we do so. And parents need to be responsible if their child is either being bullied or if their child is a bully. Parents need to be involved to stop the bullying or to help the child if they are being bullied. And we at the Mobile County District Attorney's Office and the Mobile County Public School System are also here to help. Thank you. You're welcome. Ayla, hi. Oh, hi, Sierra. How are you? Good. How are things? Things couldn't be better. What do you mean? Well, I just started this new job as a school teacher with the Mobile County Public Schools, and it has been a life changer. Great benefits, the hours are great, and great students. Just the overall, it's a great opportunity. Oh, wow. That sounds great. Yeah. I'm going to look into that. You should. For more information, visit mcpss.com slash job opportunities. Hi and welcome back to Art Today. I'm Rachel Meese and today I am joined with my lovely assistant Maddie who is one of my students and we are working on paper quilling. So Maddie has definitely made it a little further than I have because I got to run in my mouth and looking at some instructions that are not in English seeing if I can figure out anything else cool to show you guys. So what are you thinking so far? Um, I think it's really pretty like I can definitely make some really beautiful flowers 
Um, I'm not finished with it right now, but I could definitely just like finish this flower, make a little stem and some of the leaves, and it'll be really pretty. I love it so far. Do you think it's going to take you a while to actually finish this? No, actually the flower, because it's so simple, I think it'll only take me about like 10 more minutes just to finish um, everything. Yeah, so I think once you get the hang of it, it goes a lot quicker, but it can actually be pretty like meditative too, which is pretty fun. So I did want to show you, there are some things, and I did show Maddie just a minute ago, where you do like half of a coil and then you glue the edge of the paper so you can get these cool like wisps. So that's why this pattern has these kind of like weird things going on. So what you want to do is you want to actually twirl like half the paper and then instead of gluing the end, um, and again, there's those people that can like, they've got better dexterity than I do and they've got like the little bottle and they can do it right there on the, the lip. Um, if I had a bigger plate, I'd probably run the paper through like a line of clay, but I could, or a line of clay. Ah, my daily life. Um, run your paper through the glue, but I don't know. Get a little messy. It's okay to be messy. And the glue dries clear. So you want to kind of set that down. So decide where, and you should probably do this before you glue it. And I'm going rogue. I'm not going with the pattern. Um, we were talking a little earlier. It's almost like a puzzle and you're just figuring out where pieces go. So I'm just going to put it a lot around, put it around the line that I already did. And I'm going to pull it tight against the blue, but the blue I did standing up. So it did take a little bit. We had scissors early. Oop, I can borrow the scissors there and the kit. The kit came with everything that we needed, which was really cool. So even the scissors came with the kit. So as you can tell, it didn't stick. So I probably need to get a little bit more glue on the edge there. And this glue does dry quickly. So you don't want to put like a whole bunch in at the same time. Cause then you'll just end up with one like big loop of like dried funky glue, but just kind of like letting it sit in there and then that gives you more texture this is the one that i had on the bubble thing so there's really all kinds of things that you can do with all these tools so like that was the comb that we were showing so i think you'll definitely want to take a close look at this at some point point. Um, and this just came with this kit but there's so many different cool things which i didn't get that little tool i don't know what that's about um but I think it was on this side. Okay. The little, the little dude. So I think the little dude, that's what I was looking at. Um, which I've not used before, but apparently it should be, you can make it a certain height. Yeah. Like, so it's like, you can stick this in here and like, so you were talking about how do you make it certain, like how big you want it, like mm -hmm. the circles. So it looks like if you put this on the end of your quilling tool and then you twist it, you can watch those lines and make sure that you're getting it exactly like the exact size that you want. So while it's still on the tool, like if we wanted it at that second thing, we can open it up that way, which is cool. So I don't know if you can see that there's little lines there and you just kind of gauge your circles. So there's so many different things you can do and creative things. And you, you can be one of those people that's like, I like art, but I'm not like super creative and print out the different things like this and just puzzle piece. And it's more like, pro like problem solving. And then, you know, there's people that are just like chaos and, you know, like me, where it's like glitter everywhere where you can, you're still using the technique, but you can go a little rogue with it too. So I like it. I think it's something that you can do. And you were saying you wanted to share it with your mom and yeah, do something, which that's really cool. I think I'm going to let Maddie like borrow my stuff and take it and like see what her mom and her can do. Cause I don't have any projects going on with it right now. So someone might as well use it. So, did you have any questions about any of it? Like any of the tools or anything that we can figure out? Yeah. 
Um, for these, can you like make it like different heights or you have to like stick with one height? This guy? Yes. So you can. So if you notice, like you have the real thick paper there, if you mm -hmm. want to grab one of those thick pieces of paper. And quilling paper, when you buy it, you can get it in different widths. So you can tell really thin, thick, and then you've got this one, which yeah. is like even thicker. Yeah. I think the cat got to that one. Um, <laughs> there's like chew marks on my paper. So depending on how tall you want it, so like if you do the height, and I am going to cut this off like right here, so I'm just going to make a triangle real quick and do my glue. So I can make it this, oop, I'm dropping it. So I can do it this height. So now if I put it on my paper, that's only like a quarter of an inch, but if I did mm -hmm. it with the paper you're using, it's definitely thicker. And so you can do like the whole spiral like that, or now I have a triangle that I made and I can take my little triangle over to this guy. So when I was doing, when I was like taking the hours, especially the, the rooster's cone there, this is how I did it. So I'm taking these guys and I made the outline first. So you can kind of see, I now have an outline and mine's a little thinner. If you did that one, it's definitely going to be thicker. And then I take my different quilling pieces and I fill it in. So then I would glue everything in. And I'm just kind of like shoving stuff in at this point. Um, but it is going to be an all day puzzle in here. Um, but, you know, I would like fill that in, puzzle it. And then I've got a nice triangle with a bunch of quills in it yep so you can do all kinds of things with it so ooh, i think i got glue in the eyeball all right guys so make sure you don't get glue in your eyeball that's not a good thing but thank you for joining us thank you maddie i appreciate it maddie did come in on a teacher work day to work with us so she came to school when she didn't need to we are so <laughs> thankful and thank you for helping and i hope you really enjoy this i, I did good I hope you guys at home really enjoy it and just practice. Remember, get messy, get glue on your fingers and have fun. There's no wrong way to do art and we will see you next time.